Good evening and a very warm welcome to the Grassroots Weekender Show. Day three, day two, weekend three of lockdown. No grassroots football. So welcome to the show and hopefully I'll keep you entertained this Saturday because there was no football except in the Premier League. So Premier League is back. That gets us through it, doesn't it, lads and lasses? That gets us through it. At least we can start looking forward to it. One more day to go. And that is weekend three of no grassroots football. And as I said yesterday, let's just pretend that the weather is poor. Fingers crossed, when it's due back on, I think it's the 6th, 5th and 6th of December, that the weather is still as mellow as it has been today. We can play in a bit of rain, a bit of wind, a bit of cold weather. That's what we're used to in grassroots football in the winter, isn't it? And I'm sure the kids yourselves are all raring to go. Well, I am. I know that for a fact because I miss the referees, I miss the, the banter with the managers, the committee members, and I miss watching the kids playing some great football. Now the coaches out there are all eager to go, and there's still one-on-one -on -one sessions, I've noticed, I think the one-on-one -on -one sessions anyway, during lockdown, uh, that I go past, and I watch not just here on Merseyside, I go through Warrington as well, and everyone is just out. And you have to exercise, a great excuse to get out and exercise, isn't it? Just like me. So I'll be going for a little bit of exercises now um, after this show because I'm feeling really, really good. There's a spring in my step. You may have seen a difference. The worry has gone a little bit. Uh, fingers crossed, I'm not saying 100% that I'm going to last right up till February without any injuries because um, we're all getting the injuries and niggly injuries indeed. I'm back with the physio on Monday. And I'm sure he'd give me a good workout and my back wasn't feeling good or is still feeling good. I don't know what it's going to be like after physio because you come out and I think 10 times worse. Why is that? I do not know. Anyway, really looking forward to some physio and meeting up with Paul because he gives you some great advice. And he'll be giving me a load of exercises as well to do. So basically the model of the story is keep yourselves fit while you're waiting for grassroots football to come back on. I talk to people in the in the in my office here, all the community side of things, on the business side of things, who are absolutely fantastic with me, by the way. And I'm going to be making a massive list of all them, thanking them for the run from Warrington to um, Liverpool for the sponsorship that they've kindly given and donations to GoFundMe. They're all still collecting. Yes, they're all still collecting on my sponsor form. Wow, you know I, I can't thank them enough, and I put a post up a few weeks ago when they actually started throwing money, money in but they're all still wanting to collect and help us out now that's just one business or a set of businesses where I work what more could you, you ask for in lockdown through Covid-19 you can't thank people enough and we can't thank people enough on the um, GoFundMe page either because you're all doing a fantastic job £25,000 we have to, to raise now, I've got a little bit of news here as well because I got this off Chris O'Sullivan. Excuse me, Chris O'Sullivan from One Call Taxis who works there. And behind the scenes is doing a lot of work for me. We're always on phone calls every other day. We're talking, like, if not every day, we're talking about what we're going to do, what we're going to achieve, how we're going to keep our momentum going, what money we can start raising in. It's just fantastic, you know, it's 24 7 non stop. And I want to concentrate as well on respect because that's coming up in April for you referees out there. Yes, because we don't forget you. We know that you're all training hard and all raring to go. And I know there's a few pennies that you're missing as well. But at least now the managers can start thinking about, do you know what? Why are we giving the stick? And the coaches and irate parents, this is what it is. Why are we giving the stick towards our referees? You know, the turning up week in, week out, the helping us put games on, you sorely missed, I know you sorely missed, and you sorely missed by me, because I love the little chats, uh, the young referees, and watching your referee, and promoting yourselves, and, and developing your skills, because you are absolutely fantastic, and there is one or two referees out there, who just want to go that further, an extra mile, and want to make it, and want to develop, whether that's all changed through lockdown, I am really not sure, um, whether referees are water away from the game, because of lockdown, again, not sure, whether teams are falling, people are giving up, We've got to find that out when we're all due back. And I think that's in two weeks' time. Fingers crossed. Touch wood, touch wood. Let's just hope it is all going. And I'm just talking you through it and what you're missing. We all know what you're missing. We know the kids are missing it. 
Um, but I was talking a little bit earlier about what was happening. You, you can all help me out, by the way. Grassroots football family, you've all promised to help me out. We want to raise this £25,000. We want to raise it as quickly as possible so Emily, Emily can have that operation, be pain-free before that 18 months, because after the 18 months, if we're not raised that £25,000, it goes up to £60,000. I think I said 65 yesterday, adding five on. I think it was 60. Um, but I'll confirm that with Donna. I'm sure I am I'm right. It's 60,000, not 65. Now, we don't want that to go up at all. And we do want that money raised beforehand if you can help. Because why should Emily suffer more pain? Let's get that out of the way, please. If we can, we want to try and raise it beforehand. I'd leave, even love to raise that £25,000 on the day of February the 7th. If I finish this run, 26.2 mile, and then hear the news that someone has broken to me that we've just gone past the £25,000 barrier. <coughs> Excuse me, Mr Beat then. Just get me breath, that's what it's all about, isn't it? I'll have a little drink and see in a minute, but uh, that was excitement, that. That really was excitement. I just love it, you know. Um, we are... Cockfields Productions, film company, they're going to be following us. We're going to have KCC 99.8 Live FM radio following us as well, letting you know where we're up to. And no doubt Colin Fulton, Colin Hunt, they're the ones who are going to be helping out. Johnny Doberball, Johnny from Kirby JFC, Jason and offering help. They're going to be there and the runners, they're going to be with us as well, bucket collectors. And also we've got Chris O'Sullivan with One Call Taxis. He's going to let us know. We'll announce what we've got to you. But we also got a text, and I'll read this out of Chris O'Sullivan, um, regarding regarding um, a lad, Jamie Wooding, who's going to meet us at Walton, <laughs> Walton at Liverpool, at the Town Hall, if we finish our, we've got to say we are going to finish our marathon. And what it is, I'll just give you a little bit of information. Jamie Wooding started busking Liverpool when he was 13, underneath the big screen outside Clayton Square. He had the backing from the BBC introducing Merseyside with Dave Monks and Sean McGinty at BBC introducing Lancashire. His latest single has been out for just over one month and has, has already had over 30,000 streams on Spotify alone. The new single coming out in the new year will be I've Forgotten I've forgotten, no it's not, I'll, I'll get, just get you the name of the new single of You and I, how could I forget that? You and I, for ja from Jamie Wooding. Have a little look on Spotify, <coughs> excuse me, Spotify, YouTube. Jamie, thank you very, very much for the offer. We're going to be made up that we're going to be running to music and I wonder if Jamie could write a song for us. Hey ho, you never know. Mention Emily, mention all the lads, I'll give you all the names there soon. Pen to paper, put it out, 25 marathon, unique marathon, never been done. We've worked the route out ourselves from Warrington Town Hall to Liverpool Town Hall. The Golden Gates in Warrington. Let's hope there's gold at the end of the rainbow when we finish this marathon. But as I said, I've got loads of nominations to, to give you all about the, the companies who are donating, everyone who's donating, the lads who are giving their time for the run, the lasses who are giving their time for the, the run, the people behind us, Donna and Emily for allowing us to do this run on their behalf, that's fantastic, because we want to give Emily Emily that superstar status because she deserves it, and I know, and I keep saying, one million and one cases out there, yes, we could have done that, just bear with us, you never ever know what this brings in, every overspill of the 25,000 will go towards Don't Cross the Line, we want no money out of it until we've raised that money, towards Emily's operation and making a pain free, that'd be fantastic. And then overspills can only be a good thing for grassroots football because we've got big ideas on how we can start introducing that into grassroots football with Don't Cross the Line, with the studio that we have, with everything that we do for grassroots football. We've been bringing people together since 2003 with Don't Cross the Line and our respect programme. We want to carry on and continue that right the way through, please. With your support and your help, we can do. Fingers crossed, grassroots football is back on track on the 6th, 5th and 6th of December. Whether not poor, we want good weather, we want good football. I love to watch that. I'm missing it myself. I'm missing talking to the referees, as I said earlier on. Committee members, the coaches, the managers, and yes, you, the parents as well. 
because you the parents one parents now come up there to watch the kids whether that stays the same whether you try and get rid of parents i hope not you've waited long enough let's just hope that one parent a game will be allowed and we can do the social distancing can't we because i'm sure everyone will be up for that and if you need to wear a mask then hey ho we'll be wearing masks but what about all these cures that they're saying they've got antidotes coming through left right and center uh, and then they're, they're looking like april that we could all have a needle and you know covid has gone i think they're all working very very hard so hats off to you scientists hats off to everyone who's working and um, right the way through 24 7 to make sure that we're all safe and well and covid 19 becomes a thing of the past that's what i'm looking forward to because i'm detesting talk about it i have to talk about it because it's in our lives at the moment we have to get rid of covid 19 if we possibly can for the kids sake for our sake for your sake for everyone's sake and for grassroots sake as well because the kids need sport people need to exercise just go out and do a little bit of exercise get yourself fit join me on the 26 mile marathon 26.2 mile marathon in um, in February, February 17th, but there's a spring in my step, as I say, I feel good about myself being worrying lately, I'll get more results, I'll get my blood results next Friday, um, I'll just tell you a little story about that one, because um, when I went for my blood um, the other day, I talked to the nurse and she made me wear a mask and she wore a mask, and she was asking what I'm doing for health, so obviously I mentioned the run, I had to mention the run, and she was asking me, how do I feel about it? And obviously she could tell I was grinning. And she just looked and she said to me, can I just say something to you? I can know that you're smiling through that mask. She said, so no matter what the doctor or the nurse tells you like me about it, you're gonna do this run anyway, aren't you? And I just nodded my head and said, yeah, whatever it takes, I am gonna do this run. If I get stopped by a doctor, if I get stopped by a nurse, it's down to me. We all have to sign a, if you have an operation in hospital, we all have to sign a form, don't we? Well, I'll sign a form if the doctor tells me to, that he's warned me not to do a run. I'm gonna do this run because I promised someone and I'm doing it, I'm carrying out that promise because I, I don't like to break promises and never ever do. And if I make a promise to someone, then I'll carry that out regardless of whatever happens, regardless what happens in life. I will carry on and do that and I'll go to the end of the world to finish what I've started and I have and as I say we have nearly 1,627 pounds I think it is raised up to now we're going to take that past 2,000 hopefully next week and we just carry on asking you to please donate get us through you know when we talk 25,000 and then when we talk 23,000 it starts getting better and better maybe maybe 26,000 um, a thousand pounds a mile how about that for Emily that could be a crack of that that really could anyway something to work on we've been working on the FA Cup draw that will be coming out on Monday the November the 30th thanks to everyone <coughs> excuse me who had a go on the FA Cup draw and raised us 640 640 pound yes within Two and a half days, day and me. It was hard work, it's all done. Thanks to Colin Fulton again for pulling all the stops out, helping us, and he's collecting the winnings there for us. The other side, my side, collecting all that, that's going to the account for Emily for the fundraising. So, wow. I'm just ecstatic that I've never, ever, ever appealed for any money whatsoever. Over the years, through 18 years, I've always asked for support in, in the sense that support from the touchlines from irate parents towards the referees to help them that's all i've ever asked for we've gone in cap and hands we've gone into lottery grants we've been successful on them we've just been recently successful as well and i want to be doing things with some volunteers um to help us out on the things that we have to do i'll let you know on that one because there's a million things that i have to do and carry on with my support work as well because i'm a support worker um, and I look forward to it, I really do look forward to all this work. It keeps me going, it keeps me fit, it keeps me occupied and it keeps my mind spinning round. So if there's anything there that's trying to set foot on me and any disease, whatever it is, I'm trying to keep it at bay. I want to keep 24-7 and wear 24-7. I won't last forever. No, none of us will. 
But while I'm here, I want to make a difference, and I'm hoping I'm making a difference to certain people out there as well, if not everyone. We want to make a difference out there on the touch lines, out there in football, out there in grassroots football, and we can only thank the governing bodies as well, who are sending us all um, items to raffle. Some great gear that's coming up here, folks, as well. Grassroots family are going to be loving it. There is special delays, special delays. There is delays on them um, at the moment. We can't do anything about delays. I think everyone's suffering delays on, on deliveries because there's a lot on, on deliveries using an excuse for parcels not being delivered as well. But, hey ho, that's the way it goes, I suppose. So we need each and every one of you to support us, get on our side. We'll be supporting the referees soon. We'll have the April awareness weekend um, that we're looking forward to. So please, please, each and every one of you, Please support, don't cross the line, respect the work that we're doing towards referees in grassroots football, there's non-stop. And <clears throat> also <clears throat> with Emily, we need your support, we need everyone's support in this. I'm looking forward to it, really, really big year, it's been terrible 2020, but at least you can make your own year, you can do something about it, you can keep yourself fit, you can keep yourself occupied. It's no good as all moaning about what's going on, we have to live our life. Life's too short and you only live once. That is the motto that we have to bring to ourselves. We have to understand that. We have to get that into our system. Believe in it, believe in what you're going to do. I didn't win that £110 million. Pound. I believe I will do one day. I'm not even too sure whether it's been won, but I'll have another go on tonight because it's triple rollover for the lottery. But I do believe that I'm going to win this one day. I know it. I'm winning too many small prizes on the lottery to say I won't be winning the big one. Can't wait, don't know what it's going to be, but I really am confident and I know that I'll win it. And when you see this empty space one day, and I'm doing it in Cyprus from my villa, you'll have an idea that I've just won the big one on the lottery. So looking forward to it, looking forward to working close with everyone um, on grassroots. I'm looking forward, as I say, waiting close to everyone in this run that we're doing and I've got to mention Paul as well because Paul's come down with swollen ankles he's one of our runners as well so um, Paul get well soon keep yourself fit like I did we've all got a you know no pain no gain with this run and I'm sure one or two other runners Tony Mallon is just starting his run this weekend good luck to Tony and I think Gordon who's gone very very quiet indeed Gordon Johnson two yeah any more another pound that is I've mentioned you twice I know you're very, very quiet at the moment, so I think you are the wise one. You are just doing your runs and saying nothing at the moment. So all the other runners, I think Billy, I know Billy is really out and about there. He's running all over the place. I'll be catching up to him soon. Um, and we've just got to give you updates and let you know exactly what's happening with all our runners. But as I say, come on, Paul, get yourself motivated. Get yourself hot bats, radar bats. Get yourself to a physio like me and I'm sure we'll all be 100% soon but I've got that spring in my step I feel good about myself and I'm looking forward to this run and training now I'm doing little bits and as you can see I'm all dressed to train myself this evening so looking forward to a bit of training later on and I'm looking forward to watching a bit of Premier League football if you must say yes the weekend is back for Premier League football after the international games. How many injuries Liverpool have got? I did say this last night. I'm just trying to see. So let's hope they all pull the stops out. And Bill Shankly always used to say, when you put that red shirt on, you play for the club. If so, someone gets injured, you are a youngster. You go in that team. You play for the club. And they have to force you out then from injury. So give 110%. That's what we all should do, shouldn't we? Give 110%, enjoy our lives. As I say, you only live once and life is too short. Take that, heed, heed that, get out and Christmas is coming. We all know that. I haven't done a thing about Christmas shopping at the moment. But hey ho, that's about to start, isn't it? So if you want a Christmas present off me, be good. Start tuning in to us, start watching us, listening to us. And we can always give you a mention as well, what you're doing over Christmas period. And everyone that you're helping because some people out there, we all know, do need that little bit of extra support and we want to give that and we want you to try and do that yourselves and I don't know whether my voice is going but my might hear it breaking once or twice through this show 
hey ho, it might just be that I'm excited and that spring in my step is starting to work because I'm getting that itchy feeling and I want to get out and do a bit of light jogging. And I will do, it's only light, I'm not going to overdo it this time. Looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to you getting back to grassroots football with all your teams as well. Let's do loads of respect. Keep that in mind because we need that when we appear back at grassroots football. Wipe it out your head that you're going to start shouting and screaming at a referee. It's not worth it. Those referees are there to do a job and we need to support them on and off the field of play as well. Well, there you go. We come to the end of our show, second day. Third week of lockdown, no grassroots football. We'll be back on our third day tomorrow, Sunday. If you've got any news or views that you'd like us to hear about and you'd like us to read out, maladontextaline.com. Add me as a friend on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all the social network sites. Look forward to meeting up with you, talking to you and hearing from you. We'll see you tomorrow night at 7. So for myself, Mal Lee, and all the team here at the Grassroots Show, don't cross the line and respect programme. Have a great evening. We wish you well. Be safe. We'll see you tomorrow at 7. Good night. God bless.